Welcome, everyone. Nice to see everybody. Yeah. I think if we can answer to our satisfaction is you, you're meant to review. Uh, let me, oh, hold on. You're meant to review the first steps, yeah? To see that if you felt like you've done it to the best of your ability. And then we then look at step six, which is entirely ready to have stuff removed and then humbly asking that power to remove it. Uh, yeah, I find, well, we'll start talking about it. And it's, are we now ready to go, let God remove? And then if the head says you're not, I would question that, you know? <laughs> the problem's never going to be ready. I feel like uh, this is a tricky thing because when we're talking about quit playing God, that which is playing God may be casting itself as the hero of the topic. Yeah. yeah. And so it, the thing that's being looked at is what's looking at everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's just uh, tricky. So again, it's the, it captured by that statement, self can't get out of self. So when the self, and it's not, there's not a self, there's selfing, and then there's a movement. And that movement uh, is reinforced and and propelled by a statement of playing God. And if that movement attempts to quit playing God, that's playing God. Yeah. So I think this is what happens. Uh, it's a subtle, uh, a subtle act. But once you get a scent of it or a smell of it, and especially if you do an inventory looking at its manifestations, you'll start being able to have like a, a composite drawing of it in your head and you'll start recognizing what we're speaking about here, hopefully. And then there'll be relief. Relief will come. Yeah. And uh, if the problem is anxiety and pressure and disease, then the opposite would be the effect of a solution, which is ease and comfort, yeah, or contentment and satisfaction. So if these start becoming available, then you know you're onto something, yeah? Now you know the diagnosis, the diagnosis is sound, and see, uh, more can be put on it, yeah? Just like it says, the idea of... Uh, uh, you know, you'll suddenly realize that something is doing for you what you can't do for yourself. What does that trigger? Uh, expanding on what you can't do for yourself, I feel, yeah? Once you see that the principle can hold up a segment, you start putting the whole enchilada on it. I would hope, yeah? Why would you want to compartmentalize it when the principle overrides the circumstances and situations. So now you found a principle that works, which is reliance on something greater than the head. Yeah. And then you just expand on the, the topics and the range of that rely that uh, that relying on self and have it move to relying on a higher power. I would say that's, that's the, uh, that's the underlying current of all the steps and what's happening for what we're doing in the service and going to meetings. If you see, there's obviously a losing of interest in self. And how does it, how could self ever do that? That would be interest in self, yeah? So there's a losing interest in self by seeing it as foreign to us. Yeah? Obviously. This is how it worked. I'm speaking from my own experience, strength and uh, not hope, but belief or faith really now. Yeah. There was something going on that I was locked into that I didn't know. And then one day it was revealed that self was a foreign activity. And through seeing it that way, the possibility of being free from it became available. That is the exact description of what happened one day. Exactly. Yeah. Hasn't changed over the years. That's what it that's what happened. 
I was reading page 64 because I had a, a privilege of doing fourth step workshops in San Francisco and other places. So I was reading page 64, came across that sentence that I had read many times, and I saw it differently. Yeah. And I saw self as something foreign to me. And at that moment, the possibility of being free from it became available. And then I was told that I had been trying to be free as self since I've been six or seven years old. It was a very, very short segment. It didn't take much time, but its effects have been long lasting yeah? to the point that workshops I was seemingly heading change. Yeah completely change and everything i did change and what i said i realized i'm not going to say it blatantly because then it, it creates a conflict but you know there was relief and it was apparent to other people and it was apparent to me yeah and this is how that imaginary mountain fell i'm just sharing it yeah, that's how it felt. I was not seeing self as other. I was not seeing it as I may have thought I had a disease, but it was disease. It was the disease that was saying that. I had no idea of that was going on until I did. Yeah. And then there was a crescendo of effects that I attribute to that recognition, that grace. And here we are today, sharing it, exactly, yeah? And basically, most of what we share is just reverse engineering, yeah? How I grew into fear is sort of what we share, and then because of we've gone grown out of fear, yeah? That's how we can share it. We can see how we grew into it because we grew out of it. We were in a condition, seemingly, we were not the condition. We were in a condition, we were not the condition. Yeah? This condition of alcoholism and just self-obsession has you in a condition as the condition. Yeah? You believe it's you. You don't see its or origins, its origins is of the mind, the small and mind, as AA says, the problem resides in the mind. The mind is a condition. It's not our condition. Our condition is of spirit. That's the, that's what it's presented. Yeah. This isn't coming out of uh, left field. It's implied right in the book. So, our condition is not an, a, kid, a condition we were in and out and in and out of. Our condition is different than that. Yeah. So I outgrew the idea that I was a condition. Yes. And other possibilities arise, arose. Yeah. The addiction to the self is like if. If you are addicted to a drug, it's like you believe you're the drug. That's what the addiction of self is like. The addiction of self is not an injection. It's not a you know drinking down a liquid. It's a believing in what the head is presenting to such a point that we take ourselves to be the mental condition. And we lose the sense of what our real condition is, and that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a mental solution to a mental problem. We're hopefully seeing the mental problem from the solution, which is spirit. It's very distinct and very different. I don't believe there's a spiritual malady. I believe there's a mental malady, and the working of the program and following its suggestions and living this design for living diminishes the mental influence so that the the, the real condition can have a, a living influence now. Yeah. It's okay to say that we're spirit while we're completely living as a mental idea. It doesn't work. Yeah. Maybe in a certain setting, 
a controlled environment, like a three-day retreat, you may feel better. But as soon as you leave the controlled environment, you are seemingly the condition. Yeah? The condition the mental state is providing. Yeah? But we're not of that condition. This isn't about getting into another condition. It's seeing you're not in the one you think you're in. And then a condition that's always been available becomes always available. It's always been available. You've never lost yourself. You can lose self, but you never lost what you are. Yeah. The worst day didn't take it away. The best day didn't amplify it. It just is. So... When we're at, when there's the obsession and the addiction to a mental idea, we take that condition to be the condition. We call its manifestations our manifestations. You got to see it. It sticks out like a sore thumb. If you do the inventory with this understanding, that you're looking at self's manifestations, I'll tell you, I think it brings about a much larger effect than seeing them as yours. I do. It's the same inventory, yet instead of calling it yours, you see it as something other. That's what shifts it, yeah? And maybe the first time you'll do an inventory and it'll be yours. Maybe the second time yours, then the third time yours. And then suddenly you'll see it, you'll see self's role in things and you'll call it as other. And then a possibility of being free from it is available. If not, the possibility is trying to be free as it. And haven't we tried to be free as that over and over again? How many things have you done? You were forced, let's say, to do recovery, but how many other freaking things? Yeah. It just goes on and on and on because the addiction remains the same. We have, we're, we have hit such a point, we're not addicted to this idea of self, we're living as if we're the idea of self. So here's a solution. This is how it worked for me. I don't know how it will work for you, but I got a pretty clear understanding that what you're going to be relieved from is the same thing I've been relieved from. I'm very clear about that. I don't know how it's going to appear as you, through you, whatever, but I definitely know what we're going to be relieved of is the same. Yeah, Just like it says in the book, us is collective, self is singular. Self has defeated us. A singularity that we share has defeated the us, the collective. How the hell can it do that? <laughs> I believe through the act of being identified as it. That's how I believe it gets away with it. Huh? You, you try to defend and keep everyone else out but you you with you with the you with the criminal yes you're, you're abiding with the fucking thing that's ripping you off and you know maybe just maybe we're still in the act of relying on self right now that which has defeated us we're relying on i mean it would explain most of our troubles wouldn't it after you stop explaining all your troubles with the way you think they're happening and they keep happening, you could maybe use this basic diagnosis, which is reliance on self. It what it is what's causing us to be living in a sense of anxiety. What? Yeah, try that one. All your specific, specific diagnoses and getting into it, had they brought great relief? No, they haven't. <clears throat> What use are they then? What use is there to studying holes if they if you keep falling into them? Yeah, it just I would think knowledge of holes would be to steer clear of holes. Yes, I would think that would be its main intent. So let's get let's garner knowledge of self 
instead of living from self-knowledge. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, we can go to every page and get into the specifics thing, but I believe uh, what's controlling the surface are the underlying currents. Yeah. So let's just got, get down to the exact nature of things as far as we can and tell the truth about it. Yeah. And if you start traveling lighter and you get a sense that something is truly doing for you what you can't do for yourself, you're on to something. Just keep walking in that direction. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Just, <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Paul, could you um could so you share? Wait one one second though, too. Wait one second. If this is clear that what you're gonna be revealed by this higher power is more about what you're not, and then what you do is you bring when when you're when you're seeing or become aware of that stuff, you bring it to six and seven. That's where all the mental gold gets, you know, all the little necklaces and handcuffs and everything else get melted. And then the higher power uses the gold for some other purpose, yeah? Which will enrich your life and other lives. The gold is there, yeah? But we, it's been formed into jewelry that's enslaving us, literally. So we, Bring it to six and seven, it gets melted down and then it, it gets repurposed. It's be, it, yes, it's put to a different use. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, Mike, thank you. Yeah, that, that's great. I, I, that's just what I was gonna ask you is about that, the analogy that you used about the goldsmith and, and taking them. Um, these character defects to, to, to the higher power so that he can refigure them and return them to us how he sees fit. Um, cause, cause, cause early in my recovery, Paul, I was told, okay, so you're going to pick two, two of your character defects and you're going to go home and work on them. And, and that didn't work out too good. That was kind of like playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. Well, it may work for others, but the thing is, because this is a subjective experience, yeah, sometimes what's the key to one person isn't the key to the other, yeah? And you've got to find what works, yeah? It didn't work to keep reviewing the manifestations of self as mine. It turned into an obsession with self in a weird way where I would work with people and I'd have to tell them to stop doing inventories because I felt it was like this obsession of self was having a field day with looking at your motives. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it just fucking grew on the, on the whole of the solution. <laughs> really? I did. And so I think this solution has its own momentum. Yeah. Maybe in the beginning, you feel like you're hosing, you're holding the fire hose with the fireman. But after a while, you realize, you know, <laughs> you're being moved, you're being changed, you're being held. Yeah. You're being directed. That to me is the, the intimacy of having a relationship with a higher power through recovery, yeah? That would be my description of the uh, relationship, yeah? Something moves me, directs me, lives through me, does things that I couldn't possibly do, and I get to observe it, yeah? I get to see that I'm being used as an expression, and I have an appropriate response of honor and or a W-E and gratitude, I do, yeah. To the point where it changed my attitude, really. So. Uh, 
I don't know how it is. Uh, I can just go buy shares when I go to meetings. I'm going to go to a meeting today with my sponsee. I just I can only go buy shares of how I how people are doing. Yeah. And when they're still talking about fear at a certain point, I feel like maybe we need to look at things a different way, yeah? Because how long would it take to outgrow fear? It can't be an infinite pro progression. It has to be a finite to a point where you get established in a condition not based on fear, yeah? I don't believe it's a continually outgrowing. I believe you grew into it and you grow out of it. So, yeah, we're feeling the sense of we've already grown into the fear and now it seems to be a basis. Yeah, anxiety, let's say. When you grow out of it, there's a new basis, which is reliance on something that's reliable. I don't think there's constantly outgrowing fear. I think there's a point where you outgrew it sufficiently where it's not a dominant influence. Yeah? What do you grow into? Do you grow into a citadel that's completely in its weird way of defending from fear is honoring fear? Or is it more of relaxed, free range type of character? Like you're free from fear. Yeah? You're not like shielded from it or in a fortress that can defend against it. You're free from it to a sense, yeah? That looks different to me than just waiting for the next war of fear to start occurring. I feel that's a different effect. If you outgrew something, you outgrew it, yeah? But yeah, perhaps there's a new basis, a new attitude and outlook. Yeah. How can you re reinforce the new attitude and outlook? Tell the truth about the old attitude and the old outlook. And when the old attitude and old outlook is presented to you, bring it to step six and seven. I'm entirely ready to have this old attitude and old outlook, right? Be reconfigured, changed. Here you go. And then go about my day. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking something up doesn't mean you're a fuck up. Yes. You make amends. You have thousands of demonstrations you're not, and the one thing the head just clings on to. You see, you're a fuck up. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So the mental, you know, this problem is a condition. It's not our condition. It's a condition. This condition, when you're in it, may seem to eclipse our condition, but it doesn't. Our condition just gets becomes an unsuspected inner resource. It's still there. Yes. Does this have to be here? No, it's, it's not an essential condition. The essential condition would be I am existing. Yeah, the existence. That's essential. This isn't an essential condition. You were an alcoholic when you were four years old. Yeah. The problem resides in the mind, which is one of many conditions, yeah? The solution resides in our condition, which is the only real condition. Who's going to win out, the finite or the infinite, in any tug of war? Well, 
Thank you, Mike. And thanks for the reading. Yes. So, shit's revealed to us a lot. Yeah. I believe a lot of what's revealed to us is about what we're not. Yeah. Self. And when it's revealed, we have a method. We bring it to step six and seven. Yeah. It's like, and after a while, it's like putting out the garbage. I know the garbage men come at Wednesday morning, so you put it out Tuesday night. I don't sit up all night looking to see if the garbage man comes or not. I have faith that they come because I go out Wednesday and it's gone. <laughs> the faith isn't a leap of faith. It's from observation. It works, yeah? I have reached, I'll give you an example. Do you have time or do you want to start other people share? No, no, we have time. We have one question. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, we have. All right. So as Paul, I had this one dark shadow that used to come up when I was involved in significant relations, like where I felt love. Yes. There would be a suspicion or a paranoia. It was suspicion first, and then it turned into a paranoia. And then my head would feel like somebody was going to do something to me. And it was so sure it would act out. Yeah. I would put my foot in my mouth and I would fuck up the day and maybe the relationship, make a real ass of myself. And this thing would be a re recurring event. And it got very demoralizing because my only solution to it was limit my affairs. Yeah. Not get involved on any love type level because this thing's going to come out. Now I'm sober and it's still occurring, still happening. Usually it would happen around holidays, the worst. I don't know why, but there must be some fucking thing about it. And then I never had gone to therapy, but I even went to therapy for this and it didn't seem to work, help. Because it was nothing like catching it when it was coming up, yeah? It was hard to describe its machinations while it wasn't doing it. So here I was, I must have been about eight years sober and this aspect was still pretty demoralizing. I was doing, you know, asking it to be removed and stuff like that. And there was luckily a trust in this process. And then it was a New Year's Eve and I was going out with this beautiful girl that I knew I probably shouldn't be going out with. Yes. Yeah. I knew there was something I knew that I didn't want to know. <laughs> so there I was and I, this thing came out, came over me and I started a fight with her, like verbal fight. And uh, and then I stormed out, which I was the last thing I wanted to do. But I, it was like a move, you know, like a dance move. So I got to my car and I immediately called her up because I wanted to stay reengaged. Yeah, I didn't want to leave. I wanted to. This thing wanted to. It had its moment on the stage. It wanted to go full bore. So I call her up and I rush back up there to go round two, and then suddenly. I don't know what happened. I was ready once again to put my second foot in my mouth and something happened. Yeah? Something stepped in and simmered it down. And then it went, the night went in a whole new direction. Yes? And from that point on, I outgrew that condition that I thought I was never going to outgrow. Yeah? There may be a potentiality of it arising, but it hasn't arisen, yeah, since then. A long, 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 long time, yeah. So you may not think things are occurring by bringing stuff to six and seven, but it may just need to build up a mo enough momentum 
to fill in these deep mental and emotional grooves that fucking active addiction and alcoholism has laid down on our tracks, yeah? But inevitably, you find when you make a decision from this higher power, yeah, these unfort, these, uh, you're going to have trains of circumstances that are going to bring you great fortune. You're, you're going to feel like you don't deserve and you're going to feel an incredible amount of gratitude. And that's what I felt after that night. Yeah. Something had truly did for me what I could not do for myself. How many more? Why wouldn't you allow that principle to expand in your life? Yeah. So there you go. That was awesome, Paul. Thank you. Are you ready for a question? Yes, I am. Yeah. All right. Come on in. Whatever. Yeah. Hi, Sally. Hi. Hi. That's kind of obliterated everything I was wanting to ask, but I did want this thing, right? Where, um, like you use this word parasite for this thing that takes over or seems to take over. And I'm finding it really useful because I was taught the um, spiritual way that I had to love my past before I could get over it and I hated it, so I couldn't love it. And this idea that I must love everything, which I don't. And then thinking of it as a parasite, like I've always had this idea that I hate myself. Whenever I go to a therapist, I love, there's nothing more I love than telling them how much I hate myself, which is just pointless, obviously. But then I see that it's this, that even that's the parasite that's got hold of me. And it's like, right, let's go and shove your face in the puddle and stamp on your head. and. And so having this thing as something external instead of um, part of this oneness and non-duality and all of that makes life so much easier. And then on Tuesday, you said something about a contract and someone in the chat picked up on it. And it almost felt like I've got a contract with this parasite, like I have to keep playing with it. And it's just, you know, after listening to you now, it's kind of, it seems more ridiculous, but... Um, yeah, it's much more helpful to see this thing as something that comes from outside. I don't even know why it's there. I'm less interested in why it's there, but it comes it comes in all kinds of costumes and it's just what it does. So it's, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's how I've understood it. Yeah, so it's like, oh, that's just it now. It's doing it again. And um... see, the thing is, you that which wants to be all of you has a field day that there's all of you. Yeah. That's why that mechanism of it's just another aspect of me doesn't seem to work. So you use the duality to arrive at the absoluteness in a sense. So you see something as other than you, yeah? And then uh, if, if it is a part of you, it's not a part of you that's saying it's the whole of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So I feel uh, let's say if this is a four step dance move, yeah? And you thought it was just a two-step dance move. You believe the two-step dance, move, but it's not working. So then just add a couple of steps and now it works. So there you go. And the whole point isn't that the step is real. It's the effect. That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Relief from all this extraneous activity. Yeah. So. I didn't come up with this. This was just reverse engineered. That's all. I saw, yeah. To me, uh, 
you know, when people would describe everything as love and everything is perfect, and then you look at what how you see it, and you're going, and in self-centeredness, you can only see that you must have done something to make it like this. Yeah. So if there's all this beautiful perfectness, and yet I see it this way, fuck, you know, in self said I must be the the author or the cause of this, which is like, it's sort of like what they slip you in Catholicism. They slip you this idea of original sin that you don't remember ever committing or doing, but you're basically damned to begin with <laughs> already. And it's sort of like, what? I don't remember. <laughs> How did I how did I do the most undoable thing and not remember I was in there doing it? So, you know, so this idea of uh, sometimes I'd hear descriptions of the indescribable, which was much better left than described, I feel. But it would just make it heavier and heavier on me. It wouldn't bring about a lightness. Yeah, it wouldn't. It would bring heaviness. And I was going, wait a minute, you know. So that's why I like the term dog shit and very uh, awareness and stuff. Take a lot of the the uh, the wrappings off it and just relief, yes? Just relief from an ongoing activity that resides in the mind. <laughs> that's what, to me, it is, really. Uh, and it's a relief based on a recognition that you're not that, really. I don't find lasting relief because just like if you are very nice, it's just like if you probably had a domesticated tiger, I'm sure your head every once in a while, mostly every day is thinking it's going to rip my head off at any moment. Yeah. You know, when you're, you know, playing roughhouse with it, you're thinking, wait a minute, this nature of this is a tiger. It could, it could rip my head off at any moment. Yeah. I would think so. You know what I mean? I don't think they're always feeling very safe and secure if they've got a big tiger in their house, no matter how long they've had it, because its nature is of a tiger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> so you can try to, you know, blow the parasite, you know, get a gold leash for it. Uh, you know, make it a service animal or make it your amigo, but it, it doesn't seem to work. It's It's got a parasitical nature, yeah? So, yeah, it may be part of you, but it wants to be all of you. And it will, and it will use the story that it's all of us to make it all, all of you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so. I've seen it, so I don't know. I'm just I'm just reporting from uh <laughs> I'm just sharing it with the hopes that you'll see something. It does I don't care if you see it the way I saw it. I I would like you to have the relief that seems to be available here. Yeah, that's all really. However, it works, but I find I see a lot of ways that I don't believe it works because it's just not being demonstrated. Yeah. It's just, you know, uh, yeah. So there you go. I like, I like you, Sally. Thank you. I, I, I've seen you. Uh, Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot of fun here anyway, so that's good. Hmm? It's a lot of fun here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. It should be a light topic, really. It really should be. Because it's what you're hoping for to succeed in is already so. So it should be pretty light. And a lot of laughing because it's ridiculous. All the stories of us looking for what we are with what we are. It's just great. <laughs> I mean, it's... a. Uh, it's a basis of laughing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. We don't keep it light. It's light. Yeah. We're just aligned with the expression of what it is. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see even consciousness demonstrating thought and effort to be con conscious. I don't. I just don't think. I don't think if something is of your nature, 
it's flows sort of naturally. It doesn't have to be forced or I don't see sweat going along with its expression. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I was seeing just as clearly the worst day of my life as the best day of my life. The awareness, I don't think, gets discriminated through with good and bad or close and far or yes or no. I don't. I think it's more like a field that is evenly spread infinitely, so to speak. Yeah? Yeah. So I think a little bit of that goes a long way here. I do. Because here, you know, mountains are being made out of molehills and it's a subjective ride and uh, everyone wants to tinker with the roller coaster. It's not the roller coaster. It's the person on the roller coaster that's giving it the meaning, yeah? So let's tinker with that. Not with the, the non-essentials, but with the essential, which is the dividing space of I am and I am Paul, yeah? That, that huge space of the I am and then I am Paul. It's, uh, it's not like I am Paul. It's I am, and then it's I am Paul, yeah? And when Paul arises, it seemingly acts like the sun and eclipses the other suns of I am. And now I am Paul gets completely reinforced by I was Paul and I will be Paul because there's no I am Paul. <laughs> it comes from obsession with I was Paul and obsession with I will be Paul. <laughs> That's why they say there's no God in the past or the future other than self, yeah? <laughs> that's, the, that's where it plays God, in the past and the future. Unfortunately, it plays God now concerning the past and the future, yeah? We don't see it, it's playing God because we think it's us being Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no being Paul. There's no being Paul. Paul is not being. Paul is arrived at by claiming what's brought about through I am. Yeah, that's what it is. The head claims everything and implies it's Paul. Yeah. Paul the thinker, Paul the feeler, Paul the doer, Paul the haver, Paul the loser, Paul the one who's alive, Paul who's conscious, Paul who is aware, Paul, 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 Paul. It's not true. Never was, never will be. It can appear to be true now through a lot of machinations, mostly deriving from the mental activity. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. The problem resides in the mind, as the recovery program tells us. Yeah. The mental activity brings about the idea of time, all this shit. Yes. Yeah. You didn't, when you were a baby, that's why we love to see babies, most people, because Paul hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> The baby arrives first, and then Paul is an add-on a, a month, about 18 months later. <laughs> Paul's like a carpetbagger. He's never, yeah. He wasn't even there at the beginning, and he won't be there, thank God, at the end. <laughs> he just he just fills up the middle with all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> there was you were calling something Paul before the Paul was even there. <laughs> the kid doesn't even know what you're saying to it. Oh, Mary. No, it learns. Yeah. When, when you're dead, you're going to die unbeknownst to the mental activity. The mental activity will arrive about a half a second too late and try to pronounce, oh, you're dead, before. 
but it's gonna you're gonna pass away before it knows you passed away. <laughs> you came before it knew you came. Did you? Did you not? As a body, you came before it knew you came, and you're gonna pass away before it knows you've passed away. Now it describes the whole race, but wasn't there at the beginning, nor is it there at the end. <laughs> yet it says the whole race is your race the whole time, yet never was there in the beginning nor at the end. <laughs> the all the all seeing head only knew I got run over by a car after I got run over by a car. <laughs> there was no pre warning I was going to be run over by a car. <laughs> you would think if it was on the lookout to to uh, <laughs> to sort of lead me from danger. It's a pretty bad fucking uh, scout. <laughs> It didn't even realize I was going to get run over twice until afterwards. <laughs> now you're relying on it right this moment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, hey, it's really thanks, Sally. You always, you always uh, let my head wander, which I like. Yeah. All right. Anyone else, Mike? Sorry for that little, I went into a loop there. You know that the head's narrative is a second, it's a half second delayed, yes? It's I got much. run over too, and it was like, the thought I had as my foot was under his wheel was, I think I'm being run over. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's very, it's really alert. It's an alert little, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely not a security system, no. no. It 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 repels it repels the burglar with welcome, welcome. The money's in the third floor in a closet. <laughs> wow! Why did I hire this security job? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I feel it's on a time delay. So I believe consciousness is in contact. That's the, 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 the inception of this event is brought about by consciousness. Yeah. That happens. So they're seeing, hearing, feeling, thinking this and that. There's an immediacy there. The, the claiming of it takes a little bit of time, even though it may only be like an eighth of a second, but it's still time. And then there's you, <laughs> you that was doing it, you that was done to by it, yes? That's an eternity between the conscious contact and then you, it is. But we live in time, so there's a jumping over that. And in time, it starts with Paul, yeah? How are you going to get out of the idea of being the doer as the doer? <laughs> you have to get out of it in the at the point of doing. Yeah. It's a I've I've been someone as a doer who tried to get out of the idea of being the doer. It's just more doing as a doer. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you. I'm going to get too deep. I got to go back to the three foot section of the pool. Boom <laughs> over there. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sally. Uh, Gail, you had your hand up. You were waiting patiently. You put it down. Would you still like to come in and ask a question? Uh, sure. I have just a small uh, share, just a little tiny one. Yeah, share away. Just listening, listening, listening about, you know, self is the self is the problem. And I just wanted to share the other day I had uh, 
was doing a little 10 step, I had given a gift to my granddaughter for her birthday, she's 12. And I didn't, and I gave it to my son to, to take to her, her father. I didn't hear back from her dad. I didn't hear back from her. So I got no feedback that, that they got it or if she liked it. And so I went into a little momentary thing. Yeah. And as I was working through 10 step on it, like, okay, it came to me <laughs> when I went, I worked through the thing, but when I took out Gail out of the store, cause I was like, there was a problem that nobody thanked me. Nobody acknowledged it, yada, yada, yada. But when I took Gail out of the, the story, I took my son out of the story. I took my granddaughter out of the story and all that was left was giving. And I realized how much fun I had had shopping, wrapping, thinking and preparing and putting it out there. And I got so much joy out of just that with all the other selves out of the way. I didn't need, I don't need, I didn't need any of all of that. I, I was just happy and joyful and content as if I had gotten a million thank yous, but I didn't need them at all. So it was a moment where I've always heard no self, no problem. There was a problem. And when I took all the selves out of it, there was no problem. So I just wanted to share that. It was just a moment of, you know, insight and awareness and an experience of it, of it myself, which, which is very meaningful for me. So I thank you, Paul, for planting the seeds. They're, 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 they're sprouting. <laughs> Great. Great. Thank you. Yes. yes. I have so much confidence that I don't look at them. See? I don't follow the growth of the seed. I have confidence in the seed. Yes, for sure. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. Yeah. There's a lot of ways you can have a demonstration of the principle, but you're not which is going to widely apply it. Yeah, that's the beauty. Yeah. You're not... See, the head would look at it as a way of getting an advantage on a singular, let's say, topic. But mind is going to spread it over everything. And you're going to see the truth bleed through. Yeah? Yeah? You see? So you get that, that thing that happened with you demonstrated something. Now, the head would say, I want to see that demonstrated more. But if you lose interest in that, the mind will spread it much farther than the head would ever. Yes? Wow. Yeah. The big mind, the big mind. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because the head will always give credence to the particular where the mind doesn't. The mind sees the, the context almost. So the spreading will be much far and wide. And then there'll be revelation because... It will it will go beyond boundaries that you would have spread it to, yeah, and more gets revealed. Yeah, that's been my uh, experience with that. Yeah, it's cool. Thank, eh? Yeah, thank you for that. That's that. That's a well, yeah, amazing. because you got a taste of the principle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the head would use that and keep it defined as particular, where principles can be spread over everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. thank you, Gail. Thank you. Hey, Mike, uh, I'm gonna if if I'm gonna have to go near around eleven thirty because I'm gonna go to that meeting with. Okay. Well, well, we have no other questions. We have no other hands up. So let's go ahead and say our goodbyes now. All right. Great, Mike. Thank you so much for the meeting today, and thank everyone's you. participation. Sally. Uh, Al in Vegas, John S. Florida, Ruby Rose. Oh, right, Ruby. Yes. Nice to see you. Hello, love. Nice to see you. Be, it is uh, good to see you all. We got Mickey and Chris and John K., Mia somewhere, Steve Cole, San Diego. Could be where Mia is. I don't know. Walter from the Netherlands, Susan. M, always a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Gail Pink Cloud has no real specific locale. Ham and G and Cheese Tucson. Greg, nice to see you, Greg. Hope you're having a very good day today. Kelly, J 
Joseph C. in France, Giselle, Las Vegas, uh, Nina, fantastic to see you as always. Oliver, Berlin, Keith, Kerry in Hawaii, Tony in Santa Maria, Amy in Seattle. Let's see. Um, let's see who else we got here. I think that's it. Oh, Jimmy R. Nice to see Jimmy. Andrew, Daniel, Mad Dog. All right. Uh, let's see. We got. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I think that's it. Hey, listen. Thank you, everyone. We'll be around Saturday, one o'clock Pacific time. That's a live and a Zoom meeting, and then it's all on. We we're not going anywhere, as far as I know. So it's the schedule should be up on. Then bitch slap events and I hope to see you guys travel well. Remember rule 62, don't take yourself so seriously. Mm. Right. Thanks, Paul. Love Thank it. you so much, Paul. Thank you. Love it. Thanks. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Michael and everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Paul.